Thank you, Chair, uh, for giving me uh, the opportunity to, to present this paper, uh, whose topic is uh, migration remittances and remittances in Senegal, effect on uh, labor supply and uh, human capital of household members left behind. Uh, here is the outline of the discussion. We talk about motivation of the, the paper. We talk about the literature, uh, the focus of this paper about the methodology, the results, and uh, finally, the, implication, the policy implications. Uh, about the, the, the motivation of the, the, the paper, uh, this says that uh, uh, international migration in Senegal has attracted uh, increased attention from the government and, and development partners. Indeed, uh, several migration-related institutions have been created, and the main concern of the government is uh, how to channel remittances flows toward more productive circuits. Uh, indeed, uh, some studies, uh, uh, like that of the African Development Bank in 2008, indicate that uh, in Senegal, only 11% of families use remittances to fund productive development. Uh, uh, if you look at the level of remittances, in Senegal, you can see that uh, Senegal is, and you compare it with other African countries, Senegal is uh, in the top 10 recipient, uh, remittances uh, recipient countries in uh, sub-Saharan African countries. Uh, in the CFA zone, Senegal is the first recipient country in terms of uh, uh, volume of remittances. In 2003, the level of remittances were uh, 1,652 million, uh, which represents 11.2% of, uh, of GDP. Uh, international migration in Senegal is basically motivated by the need to look for better conditions, the need to, uh, to address the unemployment issue. Uh, and we know as well that remittances have been found as useful, as useful and effective in reducing poverty. Uh, you have some, some reference here. Then it means that uh, remittance, migration and remittances could potentially have a role, could potentially impact uh, labor market participation and human capital development. We have two sides. We have a negative side and a positive side. Theoretically, on a negative side, migration and remittances, which are a non labor source of revenue, could generate a state of dependence. We know the parasitism effect in the literature, then, which reduces the labor market participation of household members left behind. So, uh, what about the positive effect? Uh, migration could contribute to improve human capital development by helping household members left behind to increase expenditures on education and on health. Uh, so what is the main message of this paper? Uh, this paper tried to investigate how migration and remittances affect labor market participation and how remittances affect human capital development in Senegal. Why? Uh, uh, I, I received a comment asking me to why you integrate both migration and remittances and why you, you want to look at the effect of both variables on, uh, on, uh, uh, on labor market participation. The reason is that uh, depending on whether the migrants living abroad have or not a job, left behind members might receive no remittances or little or high levels of remittances. So there is a high uncertainty in the connection between migration and remittances. Right. They might not lead to the same result. This is why it's important to investigate both. Uh, in the literature, uh, as you know, uh, the effect of migration and remittances uh, on labor market participation uh, was found to be inconclusive. Some authors found positive effect while others found negative effect. Uh, what about the effect of remittances on human capital in the literature? 
most of empirical literatures uh, on this issue have found a positive effect of uh, migration on uh, human capital. Only few papers have found uh, a negative effect of migration on, on remittances, on, uh, on human capital. Okay, what is the focus of this paper? Uh, mm, the effect of international migration on the labor market participation for the case of Senegal uh, has received, has not been investigated. Uh, you look this paper, file on CICE. They do not focus on, uh, on, uh, on uh, labor, on uh, what? On labor market participation. Uh, only the paper by Schumann, 2013, has explored the, the impact of remittances on, uh, on labor market uh, participation. But Schumann used a, a binary specification of labor market. Uh, but whereas our paper tries to, to use a, a set of econometric models. Uh, about the effect of, of uh, remittances on labor market participation, uh, past studies did not make a differentiation of the level of remittances. Making a decomposition of the level of remittances in order to, to understand how this effect how this affect uh, labor market participation is important, as it might help know that the effect of remittances of the, the effect of remittances on labor market participation might depend on the level of remittances at, and not only the status of receiving or not remittances. And this uh, this issue has received uh, received little attention in the empirical literature. So we are going to use uh, the World Bank's household and uh, migration uh, remittances household survey uh, to 2009 uh, to investigate this issue. Well, uh, about the effect of remittances on human capital, for the case of Senegal, we have not found a systematic econometric investigation of this issue for Senegal. Uh, previous issues, as I said before, previous issues focus, have focused on total consumption expenditures, like uh, the, the paper by Jain and Janet, 2008. Uh, we, we, do, we, we are not going to focus on total cons uh, expen consumption expenditures. We are going to focus on uh, uh, expenditures on education and on health, and as well, we are going to, to, to make a differentiation of the level of remittances to see uh, how both the level and the status of receiving uh, remittances affect human capital. Yeah. Uh, about the methodology, uh, uh, with regard, the first model is the effect of migration uh, on labor market participation. We use three techniques. The first one is uh, the probit model. Here, you can see that uh, E is what? E is the observed variable which indicates whether individual I is employed or not in the, the labor market. M is uh, the, the, the migration-related variable that takes the value of one if individual I lives in a household with migrant and zero otherwise. X is uh, we control for for the individual and household characteristics, such as uh, the household size, sex, age, marital status, etc. Uh, ZI is uh, the, the potential co covariate. Uh, based, uh, uh, according to Roth and Tibeti 2016, uh, the literature on migration considers basically migration networks as one of the influential unobservable variables. For example, Taylor uh, et al. 2003. Then, these authors consider the migration, define the migration, use the percent change of migrant to the total population as a proxy for migration networks, which is the, the, the covariates. Uh, the network variable, of course, is computed <coughs> using the data set, uh, the Senegalese Migration and Remittances Household Survey by the World Bank. Uh, the second technique used is that in the same in the model one is uh, what is called the, the endogenous switching probit model uh, uh, because here uh, both 
the dependent variable and the main independent variable of interest are dummy variable. So the ESP is, uh, is switchable. Uh, you know, the, the ESP considers two different regimes. In our case, we have a regime with migrant and regime without migrant. T, uh, TI is uh, the, criteria, the criterion function which help uh, determine which regime the agent faces uh, with migrant or without migrant. And here you have the, the binary outcome. Uh, we are going to estimate the correlation coefficient in this matrix, which will help us assess the impact of uh, migration on, uh, on uh, labor market participation. Uh, the, th the, the, third, uh, the third technique in, in model one uh, is the propensity score matching approach. Uh, here, the outcome is the probability of participating to the labor market, while the treatment is the probability of migrating. Uh, the impact is assessed as the difference between what is observed or treated and what is not observed or not treated. Uh, about the, 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 the model two, uh, which is on the effect of remittances on uh, labor market participation, we use as well a simple problem model. First, as first technique, uh, as defined, uh, E is defined as above. R is the log of uh, per capita remittances here. Uh, as well, as I said, we use various levels of remittances and we generate different dummies. You have dummy zero, which means that the household receives no remittances. Dummy one, the household receives more than 100,000 remittances. Dummy two, the household receives more than 200,000 in remittances. And dummy three, the household receives more than 300,000 in remittances. So we have tried to make a disaggregation, a decomposition of the the level of remittances. The second technique for the uh, second model is uh, the IV probit model because uh, the simple probit does not correct for an uh, endogeneity problem, does not address endogeneity problem. Uh, to address this issue, we use the IV probit model. And uh, as we said, uh, that is uh, the instrumental variable, which has the migration network defined as above. Second technique is the, the propensity score matching. Uh, the outcome is the probability of participating to the labor market, while the treatment is uh, the probability of receiving remittances. Uh, and finally, the third model. In the third model, we use two techniques. The fourth one is uh, OLS. Uh, X point is uh, per capita expenditures on education on, and per capita expenditures on health. R is uh, per capita remittances. Uh, we use as second technique, uh, the, the propensity score matching. So, uh, uh, with regard to the descriptive status, the descriptive results, what we have, we we found that uh, households with migrant, with migrants, uh, participate are less likely to participate in the labor market compared to household with migrant. If you look at the mean, you have here 0 0.58 and here 0 0.52. Uh, so households with migrants, they are less likely to participate in the labor market compared to households with, without migrants. We found as well that the household with migrants has smaller total per capita expenditure compared to households without migrants. This suggests, this implies that uh, uh, households with migrants are basically poor. Uh, uh, we, we found as well that households with migrants have higher uh, level of per capita expenditure on education and health compared to household with migrants. This is basically what we found from the, the, the descriptive uh, statistics. Uh, regarding the econometric re results, uh, for the, the, this table is about the impact of migration on labor market participation. Uh, with the, the probit model, here, you can see the, the, the negative and, uh, and the significant effect of, uh, of migration on labor market participation. Here is the marginal impact. What does it mean? It means that uh, being a household with migrant or having a migrant in a household 
will lead to a 9.4 decline in labor market participation. Uh, this is the first technique. We, we, regarding the, the endogenous switching profit model, you, uh, you, you can see here that uh, the word test is significant. This confirms the presence of endogeneity. This validates as well the selected uh, instrumental variables. Then we can, uh, uh, you, you can see as well that, uh, as I said in the methodology, the correlation coefficient. Rho zero is the correlation coefficient with the, the first regime, with migrant, migrants. What does it mean? Uh, it, it, you can see that this correlation coefficient is negative but not significant. It means that uh, a member of a household with migrants does not have a significantly different probability of participating to the labor market that a member of the household randomly selected from the sample. Rho zero is the correlation coefficient for the second regime means the correlation coefficient for household without migrants. You can see that the, the coefficient is negative and statistically significant. It means that a member of a household without migrants has a higher probability of participating to the labor market than a member of a household randomly selected from the sample. So if you compare the two results, you can see that a household with migrants will have the lowest probability of participating to the labor market compared to household with migrants. Overall, we found the, the, the overall result is the same that we found with the, the profit model, like migration reduce uh, labor market participation. Uh, the propensity score matching, you can see that uh, with regard to the, the treatment effect, there is, we, we don't have significant effect here. Why we have significant effect with the not treated, the untreated? It means that household with migrants are less motivated to participate to the labor market, while household without migrants are strongly motivated to participate to the, to the labor market. This support as well the negative signs between labor market participation and household. I have only five minutes, so I have to run two minutes. Okay, uh, due to time constraint. Here, you, you found, uh, we've, I found basically, a neg with uh, all methods, I found a negative effect of remittances uh, on labor market participation. Very quickly, uh, this is the effect of remittances on, uh, on expenditures, uh, on education and on health as well. Here as well, we, we found uh, a positive effect of, of remittances uh, on, uh, on expenditures on education and on health with OLS and with the propensity score matching method. So uh, basically, with regard to policy implications, what, what we can say is that uh, as migration and remittances reduce uh, labor market participation, the question is whether migration should, be, should continue to be considered as a developmental strategy. Uh, uh, what, maybe what the government and another policy issue is that uh, another important implication uh, is that as migration reduces labor market participation, it means that migration and remittances might not be viable solutions for 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 for, for employment for household with with migrants. So the government may provide maybe uh, direct subsidies or social, other social protection. Thank you for your attention.